was talking to John a little earlier, and he actually kind of read my mind. I asked him the last time New Mexico State was ranked in the top 25, and he told me January of 95. Now, you're not there. You're a few votes shy, but it's one of those things where you look at them, the kids look at them, the public looks at them, and they're saying the recognition is coming. You continue to win. Hard-fought victory. Huge game on, on Saturday. Just your thoughts about how things are just really gelling for you nationally. Uh, how do you react to all this? Well, our goal is to win championships. We've said that since we've arrived. That's what this program is accustomed to. And um, we haven't won one yet. You know, we had a chance in Hawaii, and, and we lost to USC. And we're in the middle of a conference race. And with five games left, we couldn't ask to be in a better position than we are. We, our record is unscathed. And we've got a little bit of a cushion um, going down the stretch. In terms of, you know, the national exposure, you know, when, when you keep winning, that's that's what happens. You know, there's more interviews and there's more people uh, aware of what's going on. And um, that can become a distraction for, for anybody in, in up and down the roster. And I think they've handled it uh, pretty well thus far. Um, certainly, uh, we're aware of, of the top 25 and, and the rankings. And I've been notified of how long it's been. And I think it would be a feather in our cap if we're able to get to that point. And uh, I didn't know. I thought it would be close after this weekend, and we're one spot away. But again, I mean, that doesn't help us win any games. It probably makes the target even bigger. You know, hopefully we can use it to our advantage this week as we go on the road to try to help motivate our guys. But it's not something that we talk about very often with our team. But at the same time, we live in a world where you can't avoid it. I mean, it's, it's everywhere with everybody's social media and people tweeting and talking about the situation. So uh, we're, we're thrilled with our success thus far and certainly happy for the exposure and the recognition that we've received. But there's a lot of basketball yet to be played. You have coached for quite a while. You've had some very good teams you've been a part of. How did you manage these teams when they had this type of recognition uh, in, the, in the polls? And how did you go about managing the club or talking to players so that they kept a good perspective? Well, I worked for Greg Marshall and saw him handle it and the, the rise to being ranked. And then um, certainly being a part of an undefeated season is helping me now. You know, I've been around that and, and saw what it took to stay focused. And that's probably the, the best word that I can use is just understanding how important it is to not be complacent and continue to work like you lost your last, last game. I mean, I can't remember who it was, but a long time ago, uh, a coach smarter than me said, always coach like you lost your last game and you're always going to be pretty good. And, you know, that's hard to do sometimes um, just because it's human nature uh, not to coach exactly how you've lost, you know, the, the, uh, coach as if you've lost the last game. But we try to keep that in the back of our mind and continue to to stay on everybody and continue to try to get better every day. And for the most part, our guys have been pretty good of understanding where we're at. And we talk about the target getting bigger and bigger. And, you know, I, I thought it was a great case uh, for that on Saturday. I mean, Grand Canyon played really, really well. And it would have been a huge win for them. And, and we were fortunate to come back and, and win the game. But we're just going to try to stay focused. We're going to try to take, uh, stay with the task at hand. And, you know, like today, we're going to be getting ready for video and getting ready for practice and, and trying to get better. Winning is fun. I mean, tell, talk about how, I mean, being on the other side is the pits, but how much fun is this team having on this ride they're having and they continue to work? I mean, they're very consistent. I mean, they're, they're supporting each other. You can see what they're doing out there and, and you've spoken about it, but how much fun is this ride for this team? Well, like you said, I've been coaching a long time, which means I'm getting older and older, and uh, I've been around um, losing and experienced that as well as winning, and certainly winning is a lot more fun than, than losing, and um, you know, the coffee tastes better, the food tastes better, you're in a better mood, um, you got more friends, you know, when you're winning than you do when you're losing, and um, so all that comes into play, I think, for everybody, you know, in, in the organization and in the program, and um, it's just, it's a great experience. You know, these kids are creating memories for themselves that they'll have for the rest of their life. Um, certainly, it's awesome to be a part of it. Um, this group has came together, and um, it's a fun time uh, of the year. You know, we're playing for, for a lot. There's a lot riding on every game that we play in, and that's fun. I've been around teams that have struggled late, 
and, and going down the stretch, you're not playing for as much. Certainly, you, you have hope to get hot in the conference tournament. But when you're four, five, six games away from that, it's, it's still pretty hard when uh, to practice at a high level and to have a lot of fun when, when you're not winning. So um, I'm appreciative of it, and um, I don't take it for granted, that's for sure. Next game is your biggest game of the season. Exactly. Okay. You've got two big ones coming up this week, and, and how critical is this road swing? It's huge. It's huge. You know, uh, I've been through – you know, the WAC travel now, and, you know, I've been through the Thursday, Saturday turnaround, and it's hard. It's really, really hard. Um, you know, travel Wednesday and play Thursday and travel Friday and play Saturday. We played an early game Saturday, and because of scheduling, we're not going to be able to get in the arena either the day before or the day of. And so both games will have their challenges, and uh, we're going to have to be really, really good um, to be able to take care of business on this road trip. And, and I think our guys will understand that, you know, before these games, and we're certainly going to talk to we're blue in the face of, you know, how, how critical these games are going to be for us. And uh, we're going to take these teams' best shots, and they're both coming off losses. And uh, so I'm sure they're refocusing and, and regrouping as well. You guys can wrap up or at least clinch the regular season title outright this weekend with two wins. Is that going to be brought up at all this week? Because, you know, obviously we've talked about winning championships, but obviously you're going to take one game at a time. But is that going to be brought up this week that you can at least get that wrapped up this week? Oh, absolutely. I mean, we're about winning championships. and. Um, they know that, and we talk about it all the time. You know, we're in a race, and there's nothing better than, than being in a conference race. And I understand that, you know, the WAC tournament is special and, and obviously unbelievably important. But for me and my staff and our players, you know, winning a conference championship would mean a lot to us. Um, and so it, it will absolutely be brought up. It will be talked about, you know, um, you know, especially if we win on Thursday. I'm looking at Utah Valley. I don't know if you had a chance to look at them yet. Obviously, when they came in here, like they were scoring a lot. It seems like they still have a pretty good offense. I know they're they are coming off a loss though on Saturday, but it seems like they still have a pretty good offense. Yeah, they're 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 capable of scoring a lot of points. They usually have four or five players on the floor at one time that can all score, which I've talked about with other teams having that kind of capability that makes it hard. And um, they run their offense with great pace, and and they've got you know different pieces to the puzzle. They got you know point guards that can really drive it and score. Then they got wings that can shoot it and run in transition, and and they got a lot of depth uh, around the rim as well. That you know they got a guy that comes off the bench that started for the majority of his career, and that's a great luxury to have. And and certainly. He got one of the better big mans in the league uh, with Man Yang, and, and he's um, you know a seven footer that can block shots and run and score around the basket, and um, you know he, he's he's a lot to, to deal with. And, and obviously in our last game, you know he only he didn't play as much, and he never got really in rhythm because he got the two early fouls. And I'm s certain that you know as a staff they're talking about that that you know we didn't they didn't get our best shot, and so uh, we'll have to anticipate him playing a lot more minutes and preparing for that. I see you guys faced a top 15 defense on Saturday and a pretty good defense last Thursday. You mentioned you wanted some improvement in your offense. Uh, is it just trying to get more open shots, taking better shots, or what are you kind of looking at down the stretch of improved offense? Yeah, that's a cause for concern for us. Uh, we haven't shot the ball uh, well lately, especially, like you said, against two very good defenses. And it's disappointing, and it's something that um, we're going to address starting today. And not that we haven't tried to work on it, you know, prior to, to those games, but I think it needs to be more of a priority for us. You know, it, it's, it's a catch-22. You only have so much time right now on the practice floor. You know, you can't be going two-plus hours like you were in the fall. So you've really got to pick and choose, you know, what you're going to work on. And, and, you know, obviously everybody knows that, you know, our program's about defense and rebounding now, and, and you don't want to take your foot off the gas when it comes to that. Um, so you want to stay, you know, connected and, and tight um, on that end of the floor. But at the same time, you know, we're going to have to dole out some time to work on our offense because uh, it hasn't been as smooth. And part of that, you know, credit goes to the defenses we've been playing, you know. Um, they're, they're good. I mean, people talk about our defense, but Grand Canyons is, is equally impressive. I mean, they are physical defenders, and they've got size, and they're connected, and, and they have a good scheme, and, and they give a lot of people problems. And certainly they gave us problems on, on Saturday. But um, we've got to continue to get better. I, I thought we did a good job of not settling for threes in the second half. I think we took two or three in the whole second half and we got to the line more than we have in, in a close game like that. You know, when, when you can rely on getting to the line, which is not something that we've done very well all year long and it's something that we've got to, you know, build off. We've got to get to the line more. We've got to get some easier baskets in transition and, and not have to work so hard in our half court. Obviously, Jamario is a guy who's always going to get a lot of attention, but with what he's done 
Um, you know, the past three games, you expect he'll get more attention from defenses, and obviously you guys seem to, to handle that well when, like, Zach gets a lot of attention, somebody else steps up, too. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I don't coach these other teams. I'm not sure how they'll react, you know, to his recent game. But um, I think he's gotten plenty of attention in scouting reports about his rebounding. That's been there from day one. And, you know, now he not only had the rebounds, but, but he scored a bunch of points as well. And, you know, uh, that'll remain to be seen, I guess, when we play here in the next couple games, if they're guarding them differently. But I'd assume they'll continue to focus on trying to keep him off the backboards first and foremost.